beans and quinto and all the way from the rice granary and the rice supply of the Philippines. Nana Isiha. Hey guys, it's Vincent Quinto here and welcome to another Vincent Pageant Vlog. For today's video, we will going to highlight the women that we are loving so much that we are completing for Miss Universe Philippines 2020. Which is very exciting to cover because Miss Universe Philippines, you know, I love budget and specifically Miss Universe related videos. So I watched the red carpet presentation here in YouTube and here are my list of my standouts on the first Miss Universe Philippines press presentation or red carpet press presentation. So first in my list is Miss Aklan Crystal Avelio. So so beautiful crystals look. So it was a black and white, very trendy, her makeup is very clean and the styling and even her shoes is Strappy, so out of the other ladies, she has just chose the printed one. I am so crazy about to, to the prints, and also I do comment her wearing prints. So, not all the girls can push on prints, especially floral. So, good for you, Miss Aklan. And I am excited to see your all your videos coming soon. So, next in my list is Miss Albay. We all know her sister is very familiar in pageantry because her sister is other than Gabriela Ortega who joined Binibining Pilipinas in 2017. But this time around, Paula Ortega is fighting. So, Paula Ortega has roots in Spain. In fact, her sister Gabriela is a practice architecture in Spain. So I would understand why she wore that type of dress. It was a very clumsy. The other people's yoke on her and she just looked like a banana leaf. So she was in a clumsy dress. Personally, it is not my style but then again, it worked for her because of her Spanish connection. So there. My next pick is actually surprising which is Christine Silvernier of Angeles City Pampanga. I don't get so much information from her apart from the fact that she is a medical science student and then she is pretty, the arrival of the face, the sexy eyes and the lips and even her styling. She is Filipino Dutch by the way and she is the one who wore a royal blue jumpsuit. I thought that the dress, the jumpsuit, it made her stand out. This one, this is what we are watching in the Philippine pageantry. And of course, those kind of girls that will make a move on Philippine pageantry. So, her name is Kelly Ivy Florida of Biliran. Um, she is and so she is so gorgeous and a lot of pageant fans pick up her photo because they call Miss Belira the black Barbie of the Philippines and I'm not saying because she has the dark morena skin because if you look at the black Barbies produced in the 80s or in the 90s manufactured the feature of scaling never go away from the feature of those black Barbies back in the day so it's fun to see because we see her fighting about her communication skills. We have sneak peeks of her interviews and she's just a beautiful face and even and she is beautiful by putting her in a plain white turn and <laughs> mini dress. So even her styling, everything was so Gloria Diaz style and many are reposting and are curious about her so it's been several months right after the red carpet presentation and to this day she continued to produce photos that are super intriguing for us so i really high hopes for skelly because this is the type of girl who can invest a few years to see them grow so i'm rooting for you is skelly so good job and then a lot of the standouts facially is miss boho pauline amling so we all know that she joined Mutianang Pilipinas and also she, she defeated Gazzini in Miss Bohol so you can lose to say that Pauline will not fight for the crown. So let's see, she's on the Modern Thing Filipiniana by Mikey Andre. So her sleeves are really really exaggerated just like the modern sleeves from the 1900s. So she just really streamed her face bun and just to make sure it was again her space. Next. This one is very striking to me. Her name is Billy Hackinson of Cavite. I'm 
a little bit curious about Billy, not because her styling is very similar to Her Highness of Vietnam in 2018 Miss Universe. But also she's very familiar because she joined Miss World Philippines last year. She has the total transformation. If you look at her before photo, she doesn't really noticeable. But it is good to see she took out her hair short. So at least now she's showing more personality and a flirty one. And if I'm not mistaken, at Miss Universe Philippines, they are just really three short hair. So, but with Billy, what I like about her was the individual elements of her entire wardrobe. I like the hair, makeup, the earrings, and the exclusively embroidered barong top. And also, I like her jewel tone skirt. So, it made her stand out because she, we could really notice her easily and we could easily recognize her style. So, there. And then we have the Pride of Cebu province. We have April Smith. So, April is very familiar in Philippine pageantry because we all know that she joined Binibining Pilipinas in 2016 and she finished top 15 finalists. So, actually, she didn't compete so well in the wardrobe department. It is just her real girl bearing that really propelled. So she has the most beautiful makeup on her. The hair is really nice. It is put up in a bun with braid. And what is nice about April Smith's attire is that it is young and fresh. So she had a crop turn on top and she paired it with trousers. So it's very on trendy. One of my favorite designers here in the Philippines is Mark Pumgarner. So she made two stellar outfits in this red carpet presentation of Miss Universe Philippines and one of the most stellar girls in this edition is Tabao City's Eliza Flor Malina. Now whatever it is working for Eliza, her exposure to beauty pageants, fashion and then her network of friends in the industry work in her journey. She's in the hot pink modern mini dress skirt by Marpum Garner. And it's perfectly made for her. Her styling is so clean, it's so modern, the pop-up color, and of course her accessories. And of course, it actually helps that she is the team style. So if you guys notice the photos and the videos, footages that we saw in Miss Universe Philippines, it was very dark and they really focus on one light or several lights for the girls and so the rest of the surroundings seems to be in the dark but with Eliza we saw the full effect of her dress well Eliza is one of my personal favorites since they were nominated as official candidates and she has never failed us since day one of registration until now so under your orientation right after press presentation is really against her styling so i think what she's trying to do is she really go into the sustainability and what she's trying to do is so at least present a filipina that looks empowered that looks very presentable as look who is very inspirational and someone who can look up to so high hopes for Eliza and keep up the styling team. <laughs> Another one that I felt really looking out in terms of facial beauty is Iloilo City's Rabia Mateo. So I know she's very young but she wore is a combination of magenta and lime green. So it looks stronger. It worked work for her for maybe we got 50-50 as well too. I think the youthfulness of the colors of the dress would have very work for her if this slightly change the color of the dress, the styling, and then the hair, and the makeup, and, and then the accessories. I just, her eyeshadow is very thick, a little bit thick, and they maybe they have more, erase more, a little bit makeup, of, but it looked good, amazing for her, so. But overall, it complemented to her, so good work. And I will add Trisha Ocampo of La Union. A lot of ladies went a little crazy with the modern Filipiniana team and a lot of them got really earned away with the statement of the sleeves, the Filipino fabrics and some of them went too funky. Others actually went traditional but with Trisha it is good because she kept the colored shuffles. She was just in a cream colored barong top with a really nice cream colored skirt as well. So. But the twist here is that she has turned a sleeve. So guys, if you're 
little bit unsure of the dress code, just go with the classics. You'll never lose it and that's what Trisha Ocampo did. And also I want to add Charlene Malkwalder of Leite. At first, I didn't really appreciate what Chara was wearing but a couple of photos right after I liked the charm of her outfit. So it's like a wearable artwork but I'm not too sure what her dress really mean but I felt it was really vibrant. So I was on board about this and I was on board for the first time I saw it but thought it was very vibrant because I mentioned earlier that the surroundings are dark so at least with Chiara, she becomes stand out because we see her dress colors and it's not too look dead and it's not too dark and not too harsh so she just, just ha and she was just happy to be there this one is very intriguing for me Miss Makati's Ibana Kamil Pasi so I said that her face is very familiar and I really do a little bit more research and because she lost in the circulation of pageantry and in 2016. She actually Catriona second runner-up or second princess in Miss World Philippines. So I said this time in 2016 and she get second runner-up, I said that it was the girl we can watch out for because it looks she is has a potential in pageantry and Catriona wins Miss Universe. So what she wore is an embellished skirt in lace but she had also a version of barong top but with abana uh, maybe they just need to edit because they got carried away with styling and she had earrings on the statement of the necklace and she had the uh, beautiful black shoes so maybe if they just remove the other elements that would work up to her for her look and so with ibana there hasn't been much buzz about this year and but I really been working to hoping that she will she will pick up in the next few months. So let's see what her improvements from 2016. I would like to mention Mandawi City Cebu's Lou Dominic Pixon. So now Lou is in the modern Filipino terno, but also she also made it into a jumpsuit. So it is a tan jumpsuit like with a very safari style so i don't know if it is your blend but i think it will work for me and it has not been very styled differently because it's versus ability and it's so beautiful the accessory deals with her modern style so it is a casual style look compared to the cocktail dresses style and it's going everyone out with everyone else Next is the gorgeous Miss Bella Ishmael of Paranaque, who wore a very super interesting ballerina style dress because in the knowledge of all of you guys, Bella is a ballerina so in her dress, you can feel her ballerina vibes in her bond hair, so cute, small face, nice skin, flawless makeup, nice screen registration so in this list, it can be formed if we we don't include her because of her stand out look and styling. And I will have Quezon City's Michelle Gumabao. She is the one of the most anticipated girls in this season. She's in the Marcala cut up jumpsuit by Paolo Cabajo. The beauty of Michelle's look because it was very streamlined and for those of you who are criticizing Michelle's proportion on her body type because we know she's very athletic, I think that the cut is right for her even the jumpsuit is because it has cut out. So we see her skin that looks very elegant and it's very look like slimmer. Apart from, apart from that, uh, beautiful face, her makeup is beautiful and also the styling team really good job. So. We will see what else can Michelle get, will do because we see from the observation that she really wants to Miss Universe Philippines crowd. The second Mark Gunner outfit is actually made for Sorsogon's Maria Isabella Galleria. So she's in the white terno and it's plain on top but it was embellished in the bottom part. So she so she really did a really good job. So she looks very regal. We see the color bones, the jawline, the assets that we have been waiting for in pageantry. Yes, the cheekbones, we want that. So also, Isabella is one of the, my first personal favorites and we will see what else can she can do. And she nailed this presentation. So high hopes for Isabella. 
and the last girl in my list and is also a standout one and it is Sandra Lemanon of Tagi. I love her styling, you know, that we recognize her as a beach bikini photos that we see through her social media accounts. But this time around, we can see a new personality in her Filipina dress. So people should move on as well and hopefully Sandra will focus in her wardrobe dresses and also her communication skills. So I love her earrings and even her makeup is very polished and she's very vocal that she's really rooting for the Miss Universe Philippines crowd. So high hopes for Sandra. There you go guys, you know that when it comes to press presentation and when it comes to doing list, not all the girls that we are going to import are going to be on the list and there's no doubt and what I can say is this is just my first look and judgment. We have more events to attend and to look up for and the coronation will be moved on June 14 and will be held at the Mall of Asia Arena in Pasay City, Manila. So let's support our Miss Universe Philippines candidates and the Miss Universe Philippines for its new pageant franchise and stay tuned for another incoming news and updates. So it's COVID-19 and pandemic month and stay safe and always sanitize and don't worry guys. We can also overcome this pandemic and just keep and we just keep continue to going the flow of Philippine pageantry here in our country. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see all of you guys soon and please watch out for the next videos that I will be releasing. Thank you and do leave your thoughts and questions in the comment section down below and don't forget to like and share this video and don't hesitate to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button for your updates and news about pageant related videos. So goodbye guys, see you on the next video and I loving all of you guys.